Hi, this is Thomas. Welcome to Algebra 2. Today we're going to look at quadratic functions, specifically the evaluation of points of intersection between a quadratic function and a linear function. So let's begin with two functions. First, our quadratic y equals x squared minus x minus 18 and y equals x minus 3. So to find the points of intersection, if there are any, we want to observe that both equations are set equal to y. Therefore, we can set the equations equal to each other. x squared minus x minus 18 equals y, and so does x minus 3. And now we can work through the process to solve the quadratic equation Let's move the x minus 3 to the left side and set the equation equal to 0. x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0. We've subtracted x from both sides and added 3 to both sides. Now we can factor 2x and x minus 5 and plus 3 equals 0. So our solutions are x equals 5 or x equals negative 3. And to find the y value associated with each of these x values, we can input the x value into either of the functions. The simpler function is the linear function. So y equals 5 minus 3 which gives us a y value of 2, and our first point of intersection is 5, 2. And for x equals negative 3, y equals negative 3 minus 3, so y equals negative 6, and the second point of intersection, negative 3, negative 6. So what does the graph look like? We can make a rough sketch with a couple of observations regarding the functions. First, the quadratic. The parabola opens up because the coefficient with the x squared term is positive. So we would have an upward opening parabola. And we have the linear function with a slope of 1. And we have two points of intersection. So without actually placing this in the coordinate plane, this is a rough sketch, this is what our two intersections would look like. A straight line cutting through the parabola in two places. Now in some scenarios, rather than actually solving for the points of intersection, we simply need to evaluate quadratic function and a linear function to determine how many points of intersection there are. There are three possibilities. 0, 1, or 2 points of intersection. And here I'm going to paste in an analysis that we worked through in a previous video relating to the discriminant of a quadratic equation. And here's the analysis on the right side of the whiteboard. When we use the quadratic formula to evaluate a quadratic equation, the expression under the radical is the discriminant and we can make an evaluation about the solutions of the quadratic equation based on the sign of the discriminant. If we have a positive discriminant, there are two solutions to the equation. A negative discriminant, there are zero solutions, zero real solutions to the equation. And a discriminant of zero means there is one solution to the equation. When we combine a quadratic function and a linear function, as we've done in our example on the left, we can use the quadratic formula to make the same evaluation regarding the number of intersections between the two functions. So let's work through an example. We'll repeat the first function from our first example, x squared minus x minus 18. And for our second function, our linear function, we're going to use y equals x minus 19. So in comparison to the functions in the first example, the first function is the same. The second function is the linear function, and we're moving that vertically down. 
So to evaluate the effect on the number of intersections, let's set the equations equal to each other. They both equal y. So we can state x squared minus x minus 18 equals x minus 19. We will subtract x from both sides of the equation, x squared minus 2x, and add 19 to both sides of the equation, plus 1 equals 0. Now I'm going to evaluate this equation using just the discriminant from the quadratic formula. So I'll write out the complete quadratic formula and then highlight what it is that we're looking at. x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a and what we're interested in is the sign of the expression under the radical, the sign of b squared minus 4ac. And looking at our equation, our a value is in front of x squared, our b value is in front of x, and our c value is the constant. So b squared negative 2 squared minus 4 times a value of 1 times a c value of 1, which equals negative 2 squared is 4, minus 4 times 1 times 1 is 4, 4 minus 4 is 0. This means there is one point of intersection. In other words, the straight line is tangent to the parabola. And we can do a rough sketch of this diagram, again with a parabola opening up, a straight line with the same slope but a different position vertically as the straight line from our original equation, showing one point of intersection between the parabola and the straight line. Now we could work through to an actual solution for that point of intersection, but again, Let's assume that in this context, we're simply asked to evaluate for the number of points of intersection between y equals x squared minus x minus 18 and y equals x minus 19. This concludes our lesson on the evaluation of the relationship between a quadratic function and a linear function in the same coordinate plane. Be sure to practice these concepts with examples from your textbook. And I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.